to my channel. My name is Yasmin if you are new and if you have a car, downtown CBD life, sometimes it happens, you know, being smack bang in the middle of things. If you are new to my channel, as I said, my name is Yasmin and if you are already a subscriber, thank you very much. If you haven't already subscribed, you can do so below as well as the bell icon will give you notification of all my vlogs when I upload them and please give me a thumbs up if this is kind of like a thing. Today's video, if you haven't been following so far, is about my detox and I'm going to review a new milk that I have not, it's a new vegan milk that I have, well it might not be new but I've never noticed it before and I'm going to do that at the very end of this video so keep on watching. So I'm doing a detox and part of doing my detox I go off dairy completely. I don't drink cow's milk at all and that has nothing to do with veganism or vegetarianism. I'm not a vegan or vegetarian. I used to be when I was a teenager and now I am not. I love cheese. I eat a lot of cheese, any kind of cheese, like blue cheese, stinky cheese, bridge, like every kind of cheese. And if I could live on cheese, I would. Just milk does not sit right with me. It gives me acid reflux. My dietitian is from, well, she was from the Australian Institute of Sport and grew up on a dairy farm. So you can only imagine when I go for my appointments with her, which is, you know, once or twice a year, and I tell her, no, I haven't been drinking cow's milk. And it's just this lecture about drinking cow's milk. And she even suggested, you know, why don't you just take the lactase tablets? And if you don't know what lactase is, it's an enzyme to help you digest the lactose that is in milk. And then she also suggests to drink lactose-free cow's milk. But to be honest, I do even the fact of the, the acid reflux, I don't like the taste of cow's milk. I think it's disgusting. If you don't know, I'll tell you how they get milk. And milk, it makes cheese. So this is like, I don't know, cheese. I kind of like don't even think about it. I love all cheese and it's just, mm, 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 mm. it's just the cow's milk, right? So cow's milk is meant for cows and calves, like the cow baby, right? The calf feeds on the udder, which gets the milk out. The, the same way as humans, like the breast milk is for the babies. Now, women start to produce breast milk when they're pregnant, cows start to produce milk when they're pregnant. So dairy cows, in order for them to keep on producing milk, they're constantly in, uh, artificially inseminated so that they're constantly pregnant. If you don't know what artificial insemination is, they'll get sperm from a male cow, a bull, and they'll call in the vet and put the sperm into the cow, impregnate her so she's pregnant, so she falls pregnant and starts to produce milk, all those cows. Then she gives birth to the baby cow, the calf. The calf is taken away to graze or whatever it is, doesn't really stay with the mother. Um, and then she is re-inseminated again so she can continue to produce more, more milk. Now, it's a really inhumane way of producing milk that's for humans who essentially, you know what I mean? Like we don't really need to be drinking cow's milk. And I love cheese and it's so, it's kind of like cliche that I still eat cheese, but yeah, I won't drink milk. And like the way that it's come from is, you know, gross and I don't agree with it. But anyway, I don't like cow's milk. I don't like the way it tastes. I don't like the way it sits with me and I do not drink it despite my dietitian always telling me that I should. So when I was 13, I switched to a soy milk, not realizing the hormonal impacts that soy milk has on you. Like soy is very high in estrogen and if women have too much estrogen, it can contribute to breast cancer. If males have too much estrogen, it can, you know, give you man boobs and, you know, it's just not good. It also, let's be honest here, milk is not something that is natural from like an oat, like an almond, anything. Like milk is not naturally based, does not come like, they're processed sources. Okay. So Soy milk is not exactly natural, neither are those other milk. I'm going to choose a nut milk, make sure that it is one that contains calcium. The brands that I do choose when I am choosing a nut milk are ones that do contain calcium. The ones that do contain calcium are ones like So Good and Vita Soy. And, and this is not just soy milk, but that's just the name. So So Good, Vita Soy. There's a company, Australia's own, and there might be another one, but just check on the label that it does have contained calcium. The cafe that I go to when I was drinking coffee have don't have almond milk, they have macadamia milk. And I purposefully said to them, hey, can I just check the bottle? Drinking a whole lot of that milk would be, oh, you know, a high 
from your fat source really and any kind of nutrients that might be still remaining from the amount of processing that would be in that milk so I would only get when I was drinking coffee would be like a long black with a dash of that macadamia if it was say if it contained a calcium and if I really need to be honest I don't drink a lot of milk it's not really my thing either but you know you would be benefiting it for you know a much mother way it that they do contain quite a lot of fats as well so if you're having a nut milk make sure that the, you're not having too much of it because in all honesty you need five almonds per day is your whole daily amount of fats per day per av like on average for a person to consume oat milk oat milk doesn't oat milk isn't exactly a natural source of milk anyway either I like oats they're low glycemic index carbohydrate and even the oat, oat milk is low GI so it is suitable for diabetics PCOS and insulin resistance I never tried it never tasted it um, it does contain a carbohydrate and if you know I'm gonna have a carbohydrate I'm gonna have oats like I'm gonna eat oats right and I would have you know whatever I don't know I just have never tried oat milk at all so oat milk's okay. Again, try to choose one that does contain calcium. One milk I do particularly prefer, and I know I prefer it over almond milk if I'm buying from home, and that is coconut milk. This particular brand I've mentioned, this is Vitasoy, and I always, when you're choosing your non-dairy milks, I go for unsweetened ones because they don't have added sugar in them therefore the calorie intake and the glycemic index is much much less this particular brand has added calcium and also coconut milk is natural coconuts have milk in there and then they also you know how it's just mixed up this particular brand Vitasoy and so good they kind of like mixed together so they do come out creamy I love this in a cup of tea and it's just it's just really creamy and yum love it. like I absolutely love it these particular, I mean, they do, they are processed and they have a lot of other things in there, whereas your dairy milk are, are good. If you're gonna go for a dairy milk, make sure you choose one that is like Zymel milk, A2 milk. Zymel milk is lactose free, but again, I had it, I didn't agree with me, I don't like it. And A2 milk, same thing, don't agree with it, don't like it. And I, uh, alternative that is lower in lactose is goat's milk, and the same principle applies, like goats, produce milk when they're pregnant so you know if you don't can you get your head around the fact that like you know it, it, it's morally it's unjustly like you know what I mean it's kind of wrong right the way that they get okay but if you can get your head around that goat's milk yes it's a little bit more expensive yes it is higher in fats and it is animal fat but it is actually you know it is a lower in lactose and more tolerable than cow's milk another milk that I am yet to try and I've been dying, I still have to find out where I can get it, is camel milk. So this is going to be like a weird fact for you, right? So the population of camels in Australia is the largest than anywhere else in the world. And we're also, Australia is the largest exporter of camel meat. Would you ever guess that? We're also the largest exporter of camel milk. Camels in Australia, yeah, like if you're kind of living in a, in downtown or in a city life, you would not know that Australia has an infestation of camels. Like they're wild camels. They were brought over as introduced species when they were building like this big train track. And like all other introduced species, they are a noxious pest, right? They are so bad that like, what can you do for them? You know what I mean? Like they're so bad, they're so big. They're yeah, just, they're a pest. So at least they're kind of using it for a purpose to kind of cull them in a way. But, you know, over in some cities, like I don't, maybe Cairns do, and I know definitely in far northwestern Australia they do, they actually do camel rides along the beach and they kind of use them for a purpose. But, um, Camel's milk is like the latest and the greatest thing and it is so expensive. I'm yet to actually find a health food store that actually stocks it because it's so high in nutrients, it's not funny. I could only imagine that it's so, so rich. And to be quite honest, I don't know how I feel about camel's milk, but if I could just get my head around it, yeah, I've eaten a snail before and I got my head around eating a snail. So like I would definitely try it because the nutrients that are inside camel's milk are amazing. And they'll like if it's gonna kind of control the population, I guess, you know, because they kill them off and they send the meat out. And can camel meat is also something I've never ever tried, but I'll be down to try it and eat it because I don't mind game meat, my kangaroo meat, crocodile meat, and my favorite, favorite meat. So, anyway, so for today, I am reviewing the Australia's Own Light Milk. This particular brand, Australia's Own, always has added calcium inside their milks. They do macadamia milk and almond milk and a whole bunch of other things not a fan of their nut milks at all and the reason being yeah they're organic but when but when you pour them out they kind of like don't sit they're not 
mixed up right they're kind of like it kind of the water floats at the top and the nuts sit at the bottom right and yeah it's organic and this would be why so yeah it's going to be better than one that's not organic but still only really good for making smoothies so but when i saw this it is a pea protein milk I chose to get the unsweetened one as per usual because I do that because it has far more, le far less sugars. Now, what I like about this particular milk so far, I don't know, I haven't even tried it yet. I'm going to try it live for you is, well, the pea protein, yes, milk isn't natural to peas. And don't let me get on, you know, get onto this about how, you know, the soy milk and why I went off the soy milk and everything. But, you know, people who don't drink cow's milk, we need an alternative. Okay. So this is why. So pea milk pea protein is protein so my problem that i have with like the coconut milk the almond milk is i'm not getting any protein benefit from drinking these sources so i still need to add other proteins in there which kind of can get a little bit annoying especially in summer when i do eat more do have more smoothies than anything else because it's too hot you don't really feel like eating you want something cold and chilly and you just make smoothies and stuff right or like you might put it in put it in your cereal or like i don't know just I need my calcium, I need my protein. So when I saw this and it has the protein in there, I thought, wow. And realistically, I should have just bought one and tried it first, but I brought five cartons of it. So let's just hope and see that I like. I'm gonna do a nutritional information comparison between what is my current favorite, which is the unsweetened coconut milk, as opposed to this particular pea protein light milk. Okay, so the energy content in this baby here is 63 calories per 250 ml and 41, which is 50%. It's half the calories in this pea protein. Now the protein. Protein is 0.5 grams in this coconut milk. It's like nothing, nothing at all. As opposed to 8.8 .8 grams in this pea protein milk. Fat, zero. Cholesterol, zero. Carbohydrates in this is 0.6. Fat in this is 5.5 grams of fat. Or all of which are saturated fat. Oh no, actually, that's a lie. 5.3 grams of saturated fat and other than 3.3 grams of monounsaturated fat as compared to nothing with this. Carbohydrate, 2 grams. Carbohydrate in here is 0.6 grams. It's like nothing. Sodium per 250 mils is 199. Sodium in here though, however, is only 65. So this is better for your sodium. Now we're gonna get, so calcium 300, 300, they're usually added into there anyway, and that's pretty much a standard for the added calcium. But however, lactose is zero, lactose is zero. However, if vitamin A is 18% of your recommended daily intake, vitamin B2.5 is 31% of your recommended daily intake, vitamin B12, one gram, which is half of your daily intake, sorry, microgram, I should say, vitamin D, which is very, very important, especially if you're in the winter months, 1.3 grams, which is 13% of your recommended daily intake. Now there's a whole bunch of essential amino acids. Um, tryptophan, histamine, hista histidine, <laughs> theranine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, um, phenylalanine. If you have phenylketonuria, by the way, do not have anything that contains phenylalanine, like nothing if you have phenylketonuria. And valine in here. So, and the ingredients are water, pea protein, isolate minerals and vitamins, calcium, phosphate, B2, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin B12, natural flavors, and then the stabilizers and salt. So the stabilizers are what helps it to not go curdled like you know the stuff at the bottom the heavy stuff at the bottom and then the water at the top so now i'm going to give it a shake because i know that these particular things need to give it a shake and i'm going to drink it out of a crystal champagne glass because like why not be fancy honest review guys i've never had this before and this is maybe i should have chilled it first and i'm not usually one to drink milk just like this either, like ever. Smells nutty. Smells nutty and looks, looks like the soy milk. But it's not at all curdly like how the, that particular brand's um, almond and nut, almond and whatever milks are. It's like, all together and you spice it's kind of creamy like how the soy milks are kind of creamy smells like a soy milk because I guess peas plant and soy is plant 
I like it. I really, really like it. I'm like totally digging it. And this is now my alternate. I'm gonna alternate that with, I do love this. I do love this milk. And let's face it, like coconut milk is really good for you. Like if it's actually from a, like an actual coconut, the coconut water and the coconut, the nut bit are really, really good for you. They have different benefits in it as well. So I do like that sometimes. I probably will still drink that occasionally, but in all honesty, from my everyday milk, from making my smoothies, making my tea and coffee, everything, I because I want the added protein that I am not getting from having cow's milk, I'm definitely onto this one. So thanks for watching. Basically my channel is about my own issues with PCOS and having a slow thyroid, being an athlete and everything like that. But I do often throw some other things into the mix just to like mix things up. And I kind of just go with whatever is on my mind at that particular time. Vlogs just come to me. I'm like, ding, vlog about this, ding, vlog about that. And I often do day to day, like, you know, day to day, day in the life kind of vlogs as well. So if you like what you see, definitely give me a subscribe below and see you next time.